epistle lesson comes from Ephesians 2, verses 1 through 10, and it's about being saved from sin to life. At one time, you were like a dead person because of the things you did wrong and your offenses against God. You used, to lie, you used to live like the people of this world. You followed the rule of a destructive spiritual power. This is the spirit of disobedience to God's will that is now at work in persons whose lives are characterized by disobedience. At one time, you were like those persons. All of you used to do whatever felt good and whatever you thought you wanted so that you were children headed for punishment just like everyone else. However, God is rich in mercy. He brought us to life with Christ while we were dead as a result of those things that we did wrong. He did this because of the great love that he has for us. You are saved by God's grace. And God raised us up and seated us in the heavens with Christ Jesus. God did this to show future generations the greatness of his grace by the goodness that God has shown us in Christ Jesus. You are saved by God's grace because of your faith. This salvation is God's gift. It's not something you possessed. It's not something you did that you can be proud of. Instead, we are God's accomplishment, created in Jesus Christ to do good things. God planned for these good things to be the way that we live our lives. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. The gospel lesson is from John 3, verses 14 through 21. Just as Moses lifted up the snake in the wilderness, <clears throat> so must the human one be lifted up, so that everyone who believes in him will have eternal life. God so loved the world that he gave his only son, so that everyone who believes in him won't perish, but have, will have eternal life. God didn't send his son into the world to judge the world, but that the world might be saved through him. Whoever believes in him isn't judged. Whoever doesn't believe in him is already judged, because they don't believe in the name of God's only son. This is the basis for judgment. The light that came into the world and people that love and people love darkness more than the light <clears throat> for their actions are evil all who do wicked things hate the light and don't come into the light for fear that their actions will be exposed to the light whoever does the truth comes to the light so that it can be seen that their actions were done in god word of god for the people of god thanks be to god A family was on vacation in Georgia. As they drove down the, the road, they kept passing these orchards, peach orchard, and this one had a, there's a hand-painted sign that says, pick your own $5 a bushel. So they said, you know, that would be awfully good. The kids would have fun, we'll have fun, we'll have some great peaches to go with our lunch. And so they went, they bought their basket, uh, their bushel basket, and they headed out into the orchard. The old man who was selling the basket says, "You want to go deep? That's where the good or the good peaches are." So they went in a little ways, and then they heard him calling to them, "Go deeper!" So okay, they went a little deeper. They went a little farther. Turned around, he's still there. Go deeper! So they pushed on, pushed on into the middle of it, and he's still standing at the edge, and he's going, go deeper. Well, they did. And they found peaches the size of grapefruit. Huge, juicy, sweet, beautiful peaches, like they'd never found. They, they filled up their basket, and they hauled it back, had to drag it back, and they sat down there in the parking lot and had the best peach ever because they went deep. Now that's where our faith is. That's where God meets us. At the surface, the Bible is maybe factual, maybe not, but you go deeper and you find deep hidden, important truths about who you are, who I am, who God is, and what Christ did for us. We all, oh, we stand right today between Pi Day, yesterday, how many of you celebrated Pi Day? How many of you had Pi? Well, okay. Anyway, Pi Day was yesterday at 926 and 53 seconds and some infinite number of nanoseconds when pi is described 
We, we passed through it too fast. Anyway, yesterday was Pi Day. Tomorrow is John Day because it's 316. And you know of the signs at the ball games. A lot of people, a lot of people see John 316 as the essence of the gospel. The whole gospel in one sentence. For God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. Isn't that it? God's love, Jesus' sacrifice, and our faith, our belief. But this passage today starts a little sooner because we want to dig deeper. Depth is what's important. It's what's down there that matters. You know, in New York City, the Empire State Building stands all by itself in the middle of the island. Now, uptown, there's tall buildings. Downtown, around the World Trade Center, the new World Trade Center, tallest, not the tallest building in the world, but 1,776 feet tall to the top of the antenna. That's some. Anyway, tall buildings. And the reason is when you, have to, you go deeper, you discover there is bedrock uptown, there's bedrock downtown, and there's just this one little bump of bedrock where the Empire State Building is. It's kind of an anomaly. It's kind of out there. But you don't know why until you dig deeper. The height of the building is based on the bedrock it is situated on. Digging deeper. What is the bedrock of today's passage? Why is that important to know? Well, John starts this passage we read with back in the days of Moses. And we have to skim back in the Bible, do a little hyperlink here to Numbers 21, 4 through 9. Anyone want to look it up? They can. Basically what happened was on their way from the Dead Sea, from Mount Hor, across the desert, the people of Israel, the children of Israel, did what they do so often. They whined. And they complained. I call it days of whining, Moses. Because no matter what it is, they Moses, weren't, wasn't there a lot of food? Didn't we have all the food we could eat back there in Egypt? I know, we were slaves, but we lived well. And we were taken care of. And you brought us out here to die. On and on and on. And God got fed up with it. According to the story, God sent snakes, poisonous snakes, to ravage the people, to bite them. All got ill. Many got, uh, died. And the people repented. Now I think those snakes mean more than just snakes. When you dig deeper, you think of the hissiness of those, those people. We got three cats. We got a lot of hissy fights going on in our house. Well, that's what the people were doing. And the snakes represent something about us, something basic about us that just always bites and poisons our lives. It's that negativity. Have you noticed that? You can choose. I was talking with somebody yesterday who says, you always have a choice. No matter what happens, you have a choice of despair or you have the choice of joy. You do. That snake, those snakes, is the choice of just always seeing what's wrong. So God had Moses, the people confessed, God had Moses make a snake out of bronze and to raise it up on a staff. And anyone who looked up at the snake, instead of looking down at the snake, looked up at the snake, was cured. This goes deep. Because the snake has changed from the thing that bites your heel to the promise of immortality, because that's what snakes are. They are a promise of immortality because they shed their skin, and they become new, reborn. 
And we see snakes as a danger because of their fangs, and we see snakes as a promise when we look up and see God in them, God's promise in them. Now this is what John has gone back to. He goes back to Numbers, reads this story, says, even as Moses lifted up the snake, the Son of Man will be lifted up, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. When we just watch the world, I like it in the funeral service, it's one of the passages in the prayer, it says, lift our eyes from the shadows of earth and let us see the light of eternity. Lift our eyes to Christ on the cross. That is the shadow of earth if there ever is any. That is a sign of pain and death and what we would normally call despair and yet it is the promise of the light. Promise of the light. Go deeper. God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world. We've already had the snakes. We're born with the snakes. Darn snakes. They talk us into munching down the fruit of the tree of knowledge of good and evil. The snake is our egos. Have you figured that out yet? It's our part of us that learns. We make value judgments and we have to because none of us could keep our job or do what needs to be done if we couldn't make good decisions. We have to. We have to learn. We have to project. And yet we take it too far and we start remembering just the negative stuff, just the hurt and the despair and the problems, and then we project nothing but fear of the future. Television news helps, because that's all they do. They lift up fear of the future. We tear that away, we discover that, no, we are God's children, and there's nothing we can do. There's nothing we can do to overcome this. And people who don't know Jesus Christ think there is. My, the clearest example I know is a fella who just doesn't go to rehab and doesn't stay with the program because he knows better. I can handle this. No, you can't. First of the 12 points of the alcohol anonymous law is that I have a real problem and there's nothing I can do about it. I have this snake which has bitten me in the heel and it is destroying everything in my life and there's nothing I can do about it. God so loved the world, he gave his only son that whosoever believes in him should not perish. God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world we already are condemned by the way we live. That's what Paul said. Paul was saying those who don't know Christ are already failing and dying and are so cluttered with their mistakes, they have no way out. God did not send his son to condemn the world. That was a done deal already. God sent his son that through him the world might be saved. Might be saved. Another salvation, we always run off to going to heaven. And that's true, but that's not all of it. Marjorie Sue Hockey put it this way, in a very conservative point of view, you confess your sin, you accept Jesus, and you're saved, and now the next thing you have to do is die. 
Well, if you're saved when you're 18, that can be a good 70 years. Of what? It's not just about the being saved once and forever. It is being put on the track of sanctifying grace, of moving in God away from sin and death to life everlasting or life eternal. Not just after the end. We like to just say, well, heaven goes on and on. You know, when we've been there 10,000 years, we have more days to praise, infinite amount of time. Good. But everlasting or infinite can also be in this moment. And the infinite possibilities of this moment surround us and we shut them down by our encrustation, by our poison, by the venom of our snakes. And we only think we have one possibility. And yet God is there offering, offering, offering the best peaches in the world if we will just go deeper. He's offering through Jesus Christ who did this for us because there's nothing we can do ourselves. And all he asks is that we believe in him. I don't think he just means, you know, holding your tongue just right and saying, I believe in fairies, I do, I do, I do believe in fairies, I do, I do. No, he's talking about living in the midst of it. Have you noticed when kids do make-believe? And you be the daddy, and you be the mommy, and I'll be the little child, and we're gonna have dinner together, and. And they'll come up with this little story, and then they enter into that story, and at that moment, they are the mommy, the daddy, the child, whatever. And they live that part for just a few minutes. When we go to the movie, we enter into a world not our own. And when we accept Jesus Christ, we enter into a world that promises us that we will not be drugged down by the venom of sin and death. When we look up at Christ, we are healed. And that may be over and over and over in new and better ways. We just have, the only part we have in this is that we go deeper. And we trust Christ.